Then there's no problem looking at you, Jim. I'm going to hear the name and I'm going to get PTSD. But the cream will rise to the top for you. Well, August 9th, 1988. Day that will live forever, some ways and some places, in infamy. In some places, it was a day that opened up a lot of doors. Talking about the trade that sent my idol to L.A. from Edmonton, Mr. Wayne Gretzky. Um, probably the biggest trade in sports history, a trade that revolutionized the sport and expanded it to markets that it had never seen before. 30 years later, or 30, 33 years later now, we're going to have a team that's going to have an opening night in Seattle. Yeah, Seattle. We have Las Vegas. We had San Jose, Florida, Tampa Bay, Dallas, all the markets, Arizona, that have been – Anaheim that have been expanded on since uh, – the Wayne Gretzky trade was probably the single biggest player transaction in the history of any sport, not because of the impact it had on the ice itself, but the impact it had on the sport as a whole. You don't have a Mighty Ducks movie without that Wayne Gretzky trade. You don't have world. You don't have Walt Disney starting up a hockey team and making three hockey movies and giving hockey to a generation of youngsters in the 90s that maybe would have never gotten into hockey without this trade. You don't have players like Austin Matthews, who were born in Arizona, raised in California, so on. But you don't have those players in those Sun Belt states getting all this exposure to hockey and, and getting turned on to hockey. I mean, even St. Louis. I mean, St. Louis had been a hockey market for a while beforehand, but Wayne Gretzky helped build that up. You know, it, what he did was for the greatness and, and for the benefit of an entire sport. And he could have vetoed that trade that day. He said that if you ever go back and you watch the interviews, he stated that he had a last-minute chance to veto the trade and say, no, I don't want to leave Edmonton. But he did it. And he did it because he knew it would help the sport. He had an MVP season in 1989, even though Mario Lemieux finished that year with 199 points. He went on to play in the Stanley Cup Finals in L.A. in 1993, turning, turning back the clock at 32 years old scoring 40 points in a single postseason. I mean, what Wayne Gretzky did was for the benefit of an entire sport. He's the reason I got into hockey. I mean, if you guys remember L.A. Gear, they're sketchers now. And L.A. Gear was famous for two things, the light-up sneakers and the street hockey sneakers. Mark Messier, Brett Hull, Wayne Gretzky. I had the Wayne Gretzky ones. That Kings jersey that I had that was black and silver, I had that in white when I was a kid. And I had the Easton gloves, the black, white, and gray ones, and the shoes, and the Easton Classics aluminum silver shaft with the, the, the with the black blade on it. And I used to play hockey with my friends in the street because I wanted to be like Wayne Gretzky. And who knows, maybe EA Sports, maybe their NHL series doesn't blow up without somebody like Gretzky. Because that was another thing that hooked hockey kids, kids into hockey in the 90s. It was NHL 94 and 95. Those were two amazing games. So um, I, I look back on this trade and I, I, I say to myself that where the hell would I be right now? I might not even be doing this podcast with you guys if, if that never happened. Who knows? You know? So thoughts from you guys. Go ahead. Anthony, you first. Um, well, the Gretzky trade didn't get me into hockey. That, that was just my dad. But you're right about everything. I mean, the trade to L.A., 
um, opened up to the, the NHL door with getting popularity in the Sun Belt states. Hockey in California got got big because of it. Um, and then, you know, like I said, putting a team in Arizona, you know, Vegas, all those years later, um, you know, so it's you, you wonder if he didn't get traded to to L.A., you know, the domino effects may that followed may not have. So um, as a monumental trade, I, I think, you know, he really proved that hockey could work in certain markets. Um, you know, look, even like the, the Panthers, the Panthers don't get a lot of fans and such, but even them having a team expansion team in the early nineties, that was a lot of that was probably the NHL wanted an experiment with a team in a non-traditional hockey market. Cause they saw how, you know, the, how Gretzky made the Kings in Los Angeles. Um, so yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you could think of a situation that, that had such an impact on, on something as this trade did. Um, but you know, you reference Austin, Matt, Austin Matthews in Arizona, you know, that's where he was born. He was into hockey. Um, you know, there've been players over the years that've been from California that made the league. Um, you know, so it's yeah, it's definitely you can't you can't deny the dots and how they connect here. Um, you know, you gotta wonder if he stays in Edmonton. You know, do, well, not just the effects on you know the trade itself, but if Gretzky stays in Edmonton, you know, they have a longer run with the Oilers and how much more successful they could have been. So there's that angle to look at it too. But um, overall, I think the trade was a win for, for everything, the game, the game itself included. So, um, you know, 99 is known as the great one. And this is one of the very few reasons of why. The immense amount of personal sacrifice that Wayne Gretzky went through for that trade to happen. Because uh, his life, not just Edmonton Oilers, the NHL, everything, was at a crossroads. Um, he was going to get paid like the superstar that he was. That's what they were looking to do. Um, he was married to an actress or getting married to an actress at the time and Janet Jones, who her career was going very well. Um, he, then him moving out really was the expansion of the NHL. And it's it's something that I kind of look back on the Gretzky documentaries and say, I go, yeah, yeah, it kind of is, but it was going to grow. No, he, he made it. He was the most marketable athlete that there was. And he's one of the few players that knows I, I am the most marketable athlete in my sport or ever knew. And I can't misbehave in any way. Like uh, Rick Riley wrote a biography on him. And uh, Wayne Gretzky looked at it and went, this is this book is fantastic, but uh, you're going to have to gut this because I can't be this controversial figure or anything. I can't see there being much controversy with Wayne Gretzky anyway. The guy's one of the most mild-mannered uh, athletes ever, or especially major athletes. Um, but he, he could have said, no, I'm staying in Edmonton because he didn't want to leave. Um, we all know about the, the press conference and especially him crying and saying, I promised mess. I wouldn't do this. Hmm. Like, um, I can't imagine being a guy. Uh, I forgot how old he was. 28, maybe, uh, he was an Edmonton. He was 27 at the time. 27. Thank you. So 27 and, um, having so many life changes and just, just going, all right, uh, I'm going to move on. And he had the weight of Canada on top of him. The United States was, was reporting about this left and right. There was talk about him going to the New York Rangers. It was everywhere. And, um, this, this is the, I agree with you, John, this is the biggest trade in sports, uh, because it affected a league. It affected the player. And it affected franchises. And even though Edmonton would go on when another Stanley Cup, uh, L.A. was right back in the – well, they were in their first Stanley Cup finals. And, you know, the, I, I, I run out of words to describe this trade. And Wayne Gretzky was the only person I think that could pull this off. He was their most marketable asset. And, and he did it. So – and now it's, yeah. now it's now it's a game that does have to be played on ice. Street hockey is is really a thing. 
Yeah. It, 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 I was just going to say, I mean, roller hockey is, is huge in the U.S. now. Huge. It's played all over. So, I mean, and that was a big part of it. Because, there, you know, there's a lot of places where ice time's hard to get, and all three of us know this. So, um, it, it, it's done so much on several different platforms for the sport. So, I, I can't really say enough about this trade. Also, you know what's kind of funny? We're, we're, all, we're giving all the credit to Wayne Gretzky. Put this in, well, let me put this in perspective for everybody for a second. That Wayne Gretzky really popularized roller hockey and, and hockey itself all over the United States. At that time in the league, there was superstar, or there was a well, really good American player by the name of Joey Mullen, who's from Hell's Kitchen, who basically learned the game uh, from predominantly from roller hockey. Yep. So it's, and Brian Mullen too, his brother, former Ranger, uh, Joey Mullen, first ever uh, American to score 500 goals. Yep. And, and people forget that. And Wayne Gretzky, everything he did, he marketed this game. The pro beach hockey. I remember pro that. V, v, yeah. v form skates with the, with the wheels yeah. that would go one way and then the other. Yeah, that those skates were ridiculous. I tried skating in them once, couldn't do it. I mean, Pro Beach Hockey was great. I forgot who the host of the show is. All I know is that uh, every time I looked Should've up... Should have been you. Who was it? <laughs> Should have been you. No, could have been me. Could have been me. But no, she. I, I, I forgot the girl's name. Uh, she was much prettier than I am. So, so I'll just leave it at that. Um, but no, it was fantastic. All right. So what do you think about the Wayne Gretzky trade? Um, how much did that change your sport? And did, it was that your first introduction to hockey? Um, put it all down in the comments below guys. And if you haven't seen which doc, which documentary do you want to recommend for that? I would say ultimate Gretzky is, a, is probably the best one I've seen. Um, it's 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 a longer one, but Ultimate Gretzky was probably the best one that I've seen. It, it's in depth. It came out in the early two thousands, I believe, two thousand three. Um, but Ultimate Gretzky is really the one that I would watch if I were if I were a fan looking into uh, Gretzky's career. All right, well, because yeah, the uh, Peter Berg documentary that was recommend that um, was the first ESPN thirty for thirty. I'd recommend that one. That should be that's a good one ESPN. too. Yes, and that had all the different things uh, that were going into there, Pocket 10, and uh, all the interviews. And, of course, people that were referring to Janet Jones as Yoko Ono. So they're still, <laughs> they're still married to this day, people. So If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.